So we're going to be in Matthew 7. I love Matthew 7. That entire chapter is so good. It's so good. We learn about not being judgy, right? Sometimes I can call myself Judge Judy. When I just feel the Judge Judy coming up in me, right? I'm like, okay, don't be Judy, Mo. Don't be Judy. And it talks about that. It says, um, in, the, in chapter uh, 7, it says, don't judge or you will be judged. For in the same manner you judge others, you will be judged with that same measure. He talks about not being a spiritual hypocrite, right? Noticing the speck of dust in our brother's eye when we have a telephone pole in ours, right? Jesus just could lay it out there. He's like, uh, don't forget the plank that you have in your own eye. Get your eye, you know, get your eye off your brother's little speck. Verse 7 talks about ask and you shall receive, right? Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Oh, Jesus, you're so good. He's teaching about us asking our Father to help us when we're in need, to knock and keep knocking, to seek and keep seeking. And just chapter 7, 13 through 14, I love this one. Talks about entering through the narrow gate. The narrow gate. Wide is the gate, broad is the road that leads to destruction. But small is the gate and narrows the road that leads to eternal life. So if you've been to our house, you know we have a very narrow gate on our property. It's very narrow. And so we named our property Narrow Gate Estates. Oh. Estate, because there's only one there. <laughs> so Narrow Gate Estate. And we did that because, you know, the world might think, oh yeah, they do have a narrow gate, right? It makes sense. But really, we named it that because we're so excited about sharing with people about entering through the gate of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen? Amen? Our only way to heaven. Yes. Chapter 7 goes over good and bad fruit. It says a bad tree can't produce good fruit, and a good tree can't produce bad fruit. Chapter 7 is about building your house on the rock. The rock, which is Jesus Christ. Chapter 7 is so rich. If you have never read Matthew 7, go home tonight. I want to encourage you to study it when you get home. So we're going to be in Matthew 7, 12. So in everything, everything means what, ladies? Everything. Everything, right? In everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law of the prophets. We need to focus on doing unto others what we would have them want them to do to us. And it reminds me of Mary Kay Cosmetics. <laughs> Doesn't it you, right? I'm telling you, I used to sell Mary Kay Cosmetics. And Mary Kay Ash, she was a brilliant woman who started this company. And she ran the company on the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I had to learn that, you know, I read her book. They made you read that book. But it was she was like, you need to treat your customers like you would want to be treated. You need to treat your business associates like you would want to be treated. This is how Mary Kay Ash ran her company. And, and it was great. It's still running great today. But you guys are like, great, Mo. You're going to teach me what we learned in kindergarten tonight, right? After 11 years of Unforsaken, you're going to teach the golden rule? Yes, I am. That's what we're going to talk about tonight because we all need it. We all need it. And I'm also going to venture to guess that a lot of us are going to feel convicted tonight. Yeah. We're going to feel convicted because incorporating the golden rule into every era, area of our lives really isn't 101 teaching. It isn't. Doing unto others as you would have them do to you takes spiritual maturity. It takes humility. It takes patience. And boy, am I learning. I am low on that one, right? It takes dying to people-pleasing. And these things, humility, patience, letting go of people pleasing, they are the meat of God's word. That's not milk. So recently, Tommy and I, got, we got up in the morning, we had our quiet time, and then I, I asked Tommy, got Eli off to school, and I asked Tommy the question that sometimes I'm a little nervous to ask because my husband is so busy, okay? I'm like, so what's on the schedule for today? I feel like I... Because, thank you, Lord, I get to work from home. But I pretty much base my day around Tommy because Tommy is everywhere, if you know Tommy, okay? So um, I was like, don't set yourself up to get upset, Mo, if Tommy's idea of the day is not the same as yours. You know how we have to do that, right, ladies? Right? I said, I said so what, what's today look like? And so Tommy actually says, 
So I was thinking, I'm going to just take today and I'm going to just check stuff off my list here at the house. It's going to be just a really like, we're going to just do a punch out list today. And I was like, oh, yeah. right? Uh -huh. I felt like the angels were singing. I, my love language is acts of service, right? So I was just like, we are going to get so much done today. <laughs> So we're outside for about an hour, and I'm working on the garden, and, and Tommy's working on something, and all of a sudden I see Tommy go and get showered. And I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, I gotta go, I just got called into a meeting. And now I gotta put on a good attitude, right? Because my flesh wanted to scream, what about the punch out list, right? This is what I was like, and I could feel the Holy Spirit to say to me, Mo, water your flowers and do unto others. <laughs> and I was like, mm. right? Sucked it all in, just started watering my flowers, went about my stuff, and I was like, okay. Because very quickly I remembered while I was watering the flowers that my husband pays for the flowers. Okay? <laughs> Let's be honest, all right? And if I want flowers, he has to go to work. <laughs> So the coolest thing is I finished all my, I got my stuff done and, you know, in Florida, we're sweaty, right? I'm all sweaty. I'm going to take tap and shorts and, and I was ready to go inside and take a shower, just ready to go on. And I felt like, almost like God turned my head to our pool, right? And it was like, like God was like, like go. And I just, shorts and all, y'all, I jumped in that pool <laughs> and I got on my raft and I was like, you know, I, I'm kind of like the Brady Bunch. Like, I, we don't ride our bikes. We fix them. Right? That was the Brady Bunch. You never saw them ride the bikes. They were always fixing them. I never swim in my pool. I clean it. That's like what I was thinking, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to lay on my raft. And I felt like God was like, good, now let's talk. Right? All alone, God showed me his whole message. It was like he just made this little cute heart in the sky for me, right? You know, that's how he does it, y'all. He loves us so much, doesn't he? He's like, good job. You weren't a brat, right? <laughs> that's what we need to do. But when we do unto others as we would want them to do unto us, our flesh hates it, but our daddy loves it. Mm -hmm. He does. Jesus treated others with the golden rule everywhere he went. He displayed do unto others so beautifully. We simply have to follow what the word says to do. We have to imitate Christ. Mm -hmm. Number one, we need to encourage others as we would want them to encourage us. Right? Ephesians 4.29. It says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what's helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Our words need to be encouraging words. Mm -hmm. Our mouths are powerful, right? Our mouths can speak life and our mouths can speak death. We have to constantly be speaking life to others. We need to encourage others the way we want to be encouraged. Everybody loves to be encouraged. Yeah. Here's Mary Kay Ash again. I don't know why this isn't even in my notes, but I remember this. She said, Act like everybody has an invisible sign on their head that says, make me feel important. Right? Because we all do, right? We all want to feel important. We all want to feel encouraged. This is not about Mary Kay Ash tonight. Sorry, y'all. But it was safe to work in the, in the study. But we love when people drop us nice notes or say nice things to us or bring us flowers for pastor appreciation. I, that was so sweet, so kind. We love when we hear these things, so the Bible teaches us we have to do it to others. My friend Jen from New York, she's an encourager. She's kind of, um, we've been friends since high school, and it's just a beautiful thing because we now have, we, we had a relationship that we were party girls in school, and now we are Christian girls now as adults, and it's a beautiful relationship, okay? Life in between was different, but... Um, but she sends me little texts sometimes or, or um, some on Facebook. She'll send me an encouraging note. I watched your teaching. It really helped me today. Or, um, wow, your grandbaby's so cute. I just wanted to tell you. Or, I love what you're doing with the kitchen. You know, things like that. And, and I'm thinking, her text blessed me. 
And you know what? So guess what? When I see her name come up, I'm quick to hit it, right? Because I know it's going to fill my love tank. I do. It's going to be nice. It's going to be encouraging. And then there's other texts, right? That you're just like, whoo, got to wait till I've had two cups of coffee for that one. And I will, right? Come on, that's the truth. Because some people can be energy vampires from you, right? It's like, ah, sucked it out of me. But we need to encourage others like Jen does because we want to be encouraged like that. We want to be encouraged like that. Hebrews 3.13 says, but encourage one another daily as long as it's called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. As long as it's called today, I always say this, guess what y'all, it's always today. Today is today, always, right? As long as it's called today, we're supposed to be encouraging each other. This says we do this so we can help others not be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. What does this mean? What does this mean? Well, I'm going to put it in a term that my insecurities understand, okay? When I'm not feeling encouraged, when I haven't encouraged myself in the spirit or um, been in my word and allowed God to encourage me, and I've put my encouragement in the hands of flesh and blood, right? And they don't encourage me. I start thinking, Oh, I've offended her. Oh, I said something to bother her. I don't know what it was. I can tell she, why is that one? She never likes my posts. She gives a heart to them. She doesn't give me a heart only if you like. What's that about, right? Oh, I can't stop worrying about this. I'm always going to worry about this. I did something. That person's mad at me. Come on, y'all. Anybody else? Yes. This is when our junk starts coming up. When we don't encourage ourselves already in the Lord. Mm. Come on. We combat the lies of the enemy and we keep our sister's arms held up in battle when we encourage them. Mm. You guys don't even know, right? You don't even know that you're doing that sometimes. When you're encouraging someone, you're strengthening them against the enemy. That's what this word says. 2 Timothy 4.2 says, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. God has shown me that my job is to help women think right. That's it. God said, help women think right. Because you know, y'all, I don't think right without the word. So he's like, I'll go with the one who stinks at it without me. Because she'll stay with me, right? That's it, okay? Help women think right. But that doesn't mean that I'm the only one that has to teach it. God's actually given me the beautiful blessing of encouraging other women who have a gift to teach and encourage to teach and help women think right. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's why on Wednesday afternoons at 1 o'clock, it's not the Mo Show every Wednesday at 1, okay? You're getting to see beautiful, beautiful teachers and encouragers on there sharing testimonies, sharing the word of God, sharing encouragement. That's what we're getting to do every Wednesday at 1 on Facebook. If you're not on there, go on and like our Unforsaken Women page, please. Because you don't want to miss that, y'all. It's good stuff. I am encouraged every week in that. I'm teaching this week. Tomorrow. I better get a message. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> But God called me to encourage these women in that because we're supposed to encourage each other in our gifts. Encourage the, encouraging these women is really probably one of my favorite things that I'm doing right now in ministry. We need to be encouraging each other who have different ministries, different women's ministries and different events. We need to encourage each other by showing up for each other, being there. I was sad I couldn't make it. I had tickets to Samantha's Samantha's Esther conference. I had tickets and I couldn't, because of a family thing, go to it. So I gave my tickets to someone else. I wanted people to show up, right? Jesus is coming back, y'all. And we need the full bride in action. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We need the full bride in action. Spreading the good news. Getting people saved. We do this by encouraging each other in unity. Not jealousy and competition. This takes me to 2 Corinthians 13.11. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. Don't you love that? Yes. 
Strive for full restoration. Who needed that tonight? Amen. Who walked in here mad at someone? Come on, y'all, yes. Who walked in here mad at the person you came in with? Don't raise your hand, right? Don't raise your hand. We need to be a forgiving bride. Right? We, I loved when, when he said, when Adam said forgiving, someone needs help with forgiving today. That is so good because we're the bride of Christ and quite honestly, a lot of the times we look like bridezilla, right? We do. But we need to forgive each other. We need to forgive sister so-and-so. We need to forgive as we would want to be forgiven. Colossians 3.13 says, bear with each other. And forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. You'll say, oh, Mo, you don't know how she treated me. You don't know what she said. You don't know what she did. Excuse me, I'm in women's ministry. I know how mean women are, okay? I do know, right? So, but I'm going to tell you something. A day is going to come when you're going to need forgiveness. Because we're flawed, imperfect people, and we mess up, and we are going to want the forgiveness dished out liberally, right? We're going to want it dished out liberally. We, we mess up, we let people down, we don't do it on purpose, we know we don't, but that's the truth. So when we're in a place to forgive, we need to forgive others as we would want them to forgive us, right? I don't have to remind myself to forgive others. Because I know, I know in my knower how much Jesus forgave me. Amen. I know what I was like BC. I know before Christ. I know what I was. I know how much forgiveness I am given every day. His grace is sufficient. So I have a story for you, and it's called the chicken coop story. Okay, so you know I have to name my stories. But this one is this one came along after this message got written, okay? Because every day we got a forgiveness story, okay? How many people love Marketplace, right? On Facebook? Facebook Marketplace? Let's just say it's a nice place. It's a mean place, too, okay? It's a very mean place sometimes, okay? So I found this chicken coop on Facebook. Got all excited. Beautiful. Had, like, it was made in all these pallet wood and this cute, like, already like these cute roofs had the, the cute rooster on top and everything and I'm like Tommy look at this price this is going to save us a fortune it comes with the run and all the feeding equipment everything so I got so excited right so I said is this still available like immediately yes it is I was like okay um, and Tommy goes ask him if we can send a deposit and we'll figure out how we're going to get it and this whole thing so so the guy says you know it's beautiful Everybody wants it till they have to move it. It's 1,500 pounds. You're going to need four grown men and a da da da, or a pallet lift and a da da da. And it's way it, from us. I can't remember the name of the town, but it's an hour and a half from here, right? So I say to the man, you know, Tommy got real excited. He's like, "Great, add that to my list. Pick up a chicken coop an hour and a half away that will break my back. That's a fun one, all right." So, so I said to the man, I said, "Okay, I have to figure this out." So I'm going to send you $100 deposit to hold it. And then we have to call a couple like shed movie companies, something to figure out how to get this to our house. Because we say we would save a lot of money. This was Wednesday. Right, hon? Monday. Monday. So if you all know me, you know I, I cannot keep my Facebook app open. If you don't know that about me, I'm telling you. I post, I delete my app, I get off. Guess why? Because Mo is easily distracted, okay? So when I'm trying to study the Bible, and I'm like, oh, let's see what they've got, what they're talking about. I'm like, no, 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 no. So I go and keep the app up, I delete it, and then I upload the app when I need to post something, okay? So that's, it's a lot of work and very stupid, but I have OCD and it works for me, okay? So that's what I do, okay? So I didn't even have my app up. For one day, working, busy, trying to call all these places. Nobody wants to move this. Don't want to move it to Claremont, everything. So, so I guess on Tuesday, the man sent me two messages. Got my $100 the day before, okay? Sent me two messages that I did not see until Wednesday. 
by the time I got on Wednesday, this long dissertation from him <laughs> about, I looked at your Facebook profile. You call yourself a Christian. And you should, Christians, do what they say they're going to do. And I'm a Christian, too, because he said he was. And then I was like, because at first I thought, oh, he's, he's, he looked at my profile and said he was a Christian. Maybe he wants to be true. No, no, he's getting mean. Oh, my God. Right? And as you're reading down, they kept going and going. And I was like, and then you feel, you know how your whole body shakes from head to toe? I was like, this guy hates me. What did I do? Right? And so I started reading it to Tommy. Tommy said, oh, heck no. We are not buying that chicken cook, right? And I was like, Tommy goes, tell him to keep the $100 and we're not getting it. And I said, and I was like, and he goes, tell him your husband is very disturbed at how he questioned your Christian character. And I was like, I'm scared this is going to go out on Facebook, right? So I'm getting nervous. I said, my husband is very upset that you questioned my character. I'm so sorry. I try to study the Bible. And I was trying to be really nice and be like, but I just get so easily distracted. So I get rid of my Bible app. And I get on my, my Facebook app. And I come out trying to just explain to him. And then he goes, do you want it or not? Right? He was waiting for me to get back on. And I'm by this time going, I'm like, sir, I am a grace giver. Because I You may not have experienced trials like the book of Job. Think about that. But guess what, y'all? We're gonna someday. Because our bodies will wear out. Everybody, everybody dies. Everybody loses loved ones. And so we have to know how to minister and love on people that are grieving. Job, talk about Job for a second. Job lost family members. He lost his farm. He lost his health. He lost his life in so many ways. Job was dealing with so many trials at one time. And just like we all do sometimes, his friends came and offered advice. Right? Job's friends. The best lesson I ever learned the hard way and in the mock is no one wants your preaching. Nobody wants your Bible verses. When they've just fallen in the pit, they want you to help them out. Right? 
or just stand by him. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. Job's friends and his dumb wife all offered terrible advice, right? Terrible advice in his trials. Job 16, 2 through 5. This is Job's words. Of, and this, right, I was like, I love this. Job's like, I've heard many things like these. You are all miserable comforters. <laughs> I love that part. All of you. Will your long-winded speeches never end? What ails you that you keep arguing? I also could speak like you if you were in my place. I could make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you. But my mouth would encourage you. Comfort, comfort from my lips would bring you relief. Sisters, Job says, you're terrible comforters. <laughs> you know how many times I wanted to say to people who tried to come up with words to comfort me when I lost my one-year-old niece, Kylie, to cancer? So many times I just wanted to say, you're a terrible comforter. Mm -hmm. Right? I just wanted to say, I know she's in a better place. I know she isn't suffering anymore. I know heaven belongs to such as these. I just wanted someone to cry with me. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's what my next point is. Bear with others the way you would want them to bear with you. When people are hurting, y'all, don't preach at them. Don't preach at them. Don't try to come up with words to console them. Don't even try to find a Bible verse. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Don't. Mm -hmm. Just be there with them. Mm -hmm. Just bear with them. Just show up. Just be there. That's all. Life hurts. Hurts don't heal overnight. They take time. We need to bear with each other in their burdens. Galatians 6.2 says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you'll fulfill the law of Christ. Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. There's that forgive again. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Bear with each other as you would have them bear with you. I know many of you know I lost my dog a couple months ago, my 12-year-old Tycho. She was very special, very special and truly part of our family. And I just want to thank all of you because... So many people sent the most beautiful, just, I'm sorry, Mom, or I'm so sad about Tycho, or what, I mean, just the sweetest little notes, and um, you weren't trying to make it better. You weren't. You just were saying, I'm sorry, right? I kept telling my Eli, it's good that we cry, because this is sad, and God gave us tears for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. Don't hold back the tears. Be sad. It's sad she's gone. The most helpful thing to do when people hurt is to just show up. My mother-in-law showed up. My whole family came. Curtis, my nephew, showed up in his police uniform to show respect. Stood with me out in the middle of the pasture. Gosh, I get the customer. As we dug her. He didn't say anything. But guess what? Curtis knew Curtis was Kylie's dad. Mm -hmm. Curtis knew how to bear with someone. He stood right by me. My boys and their wives came. My grandbaby came. My little nephews came. My grandbaby gave me the biggest hug he ever has. I swear, he's not used to seeing me cry. Bear each other's burdens as you would have others bear with you. We need to do unto others with encouragement, y'all. And we need to do unto others in bearing with each other. We're talking about Job. And it's a beautiful line that Job says at one point in his book. It says, the good Lord giveth, and the good Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We got a puppy. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get another dog. I really didn't. Till the mean chicken poop man came along. <laughs> I have to laugh. We got a new puppy, a full bred border, because when we had Tycho, we always said, 
We have to get a puppy before Tycho dies because I want Tycho to train her because Tycho was phenomenal. Tycho never peed in the house, pooped in the house. Even to her dying day, Tycho died easy. I, I cannot even tell you. It, she didn't even act sick. We, I came home from work and she had just died. So I thought we had plenty of time for Tycho to train a puppy. So I really did not think we were going to get another dog because we were very hurt and very sad. But if you've had a dog in your house and then you don't have a dog, it's very eerie. Okay? Right? So when we decided to get our dog, her name is Hadessa. I named her from Queen Esther's Hebrew name. I, you know, I wanted it to be biblical. But we call her Hattie. Hattie is no Tycho. But I think Tycho would love him. We need to do unto others in bearing with each other. And we need to do unto others in communication and friendship. This sounds silly, but we need to talk about being a good friend tonight. Being a good friend. We're back to kindergarten again, y'all. This is what we're going to talk about, okay? We need to do unto others in communication and friendship by making an effort to reach out and not always expecting our friends to reach out to us, right? By being the first to call, or the first to reach out, or when the Lord puts someone on your heart, he does it for a reason. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed that, but but when I when God puts someone on your heart, and they, or if someone just calls you and says, just is thinking about you, and you're like, how did you know I needed it, right? God does that for a reason, right? We have to hear his voice and listen. But we got to be better friends to people. Because yeah. social media has done a huge, huge um, disservice to friendship by making us think that we're actually communicating with each other and not having face-to-face -face mm -hmm. in front of each other conversation, right? We still need that. We still need to sit on the couch and have a cup of coffee and talk and not worry about what our phones are recording us and going to send us all of the ads for what we just talked about, right? Come on, you know it does that. You're like, what the heck? Diapers? You know? We have to be better friends to each other. We need to reach out and not just wait for them to reach out first. We need to do unto others in friendship and communication. When I'm talking about communication, I'm going to tell you about this. It sounds so silly that I'm even saying this tonight. How about we remember how to RSVP, right? I know this sounds like a crazy thing to say, but we need to learn how to RSVP. I have a big family. And so we have this group text. So when I say, I'm going to host Sunday dinner, could somebody tell me if they're voting, right? And you're just like, because I need to know whether I'm making spaghetti sauce for four or 45 people, right? That's a big difference in sauce, right, Anne Marie? Right? Okay. So RSVP is French, répondez s'il vous plaît, right? It means respond, please, right? It's like they're screaming, please tell me if you're coming. But that sounds really silly, but people who've hosted a lot of things are really good responders. Yeah. Because we understand the needs to, to what you're putting together something. Part of doing unto others is doing things that are respectful of other people. We would want that respect ourselves. Good friends, real friends, friends that do unto others, friends that do unto others stay and help do the dishes, right? They do. That's being a good friend. You guys, it seems like kindergarten, but don't we need it? Don't we need reminders sometimes? This is some good teaching. That Bible is filled with RSVP to an event, right? That's like, seriously, like, it's like God teaches us these things. When you show up on time for things, when you show up, if you tell a friend you're coming over at one, be there at one, right? Because you're showing respect to that person when you show up on time. It's that their time is respected. Amen? Right. When we try to start on time here and respect your time because we know your time. This is a beautiful thing that you come on a Tuesday night to spend time with the Lord and in worship and stuff. So we try to respect that. We need to respect others as we would have them respect us. And i got to preach for a second here because we need to respect our bosses and show up to work, right? Yes. And this is probably not the generation that I need to talk to. There might be a few in here, but I'm going to tell you a story. This is a crazy story about a 17-year-old who I know who has had a job as a bagger at a grocery store. 
He was there how many months, Chrissy? You know I'm giving away who it is now. Probably four months. He was offered three raises, up to $17 an hour for bagging groceries. Why? Because he came to work. They kept giving him raises and giving him raises, not because he was a supernatural bagger that all the bags turned to gold when Chris handed them their bag. That was not it, right? But he showed up. And they kept giving him raises up to $17 an hour to bag groceries. Because there's an entitlement spirit that's rampant in society. And that's not respect. Yo, I know this sounds silly, but this is doing unto others. These bosses need to know there's going to be someone at their jobs waiting for someone to work. I'm so grateful for our volunteers at Unforsaken that show up. Thank you, Jesus. And they don't even get a paycheck. Okay? But just showing up, being on time, RSVPing, these are all things that are doing unto others as we would want them to do unto us. How about checking in once in a while? I'm going to tell you another story about Eli Nidlow. Okay, my 17 year old. <laughs> this story is crazy. You know how 17 year olds are attached to their phones, right? I'm used to that now. I'm used to him being attached to his phone. Well, Sarah, Tommy and I were helping Sarah with something, and, and we, we were busy, and Eli was at a golf match. After his golf matches, he usually texts us to say whether they're going out to eat or, Mom, what's for dinner? Right? Come on, that's just a good teenager. What am I eating? That's it, right? Hey, Mom, love you. What's for dinner? That's it. So I'm, I see the coach say on this group thing that, the, that it's, they're all done golfing. So I said, okay, Tommy and I were out and about with Sarah, and we're like, let's stop at Panera and get something to eat. So we're waiting for, I text Eli, I said, do you want us to wait here at Panera for you, or are you going out to eat? Nothing back. Eli, then I know it's been, we wait at Panera, we eat, and I'm like, should we get him something to go? I'm like, they must have gone out to eat. Wait, no. Then we drive Sarah back to her house. We're doing something else to help. It's another hour. Two hours of texting Eli. And then finally, about an hour and a half, I decided um, I'm going to text the coach, right? So I text the coach, and, which I thought was just the coach. Turns out I text the whole team. <laughs> okay? Sorry, Eli. But texted and said, Eli is not responding. He's never away from his phone. His phone's not going to voicemail. Like, could you tell me, did you guys go out to eat? Or are you out at Buffalo Wild or somewhere? And then all of a sudden, all the players, oh my gosh, I saw Eli leave it, blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 da. And all these guys, I go, oh, I, I emailed the whole team, right? And then I'm like, okay, right? So in the car on the way back, I'm in the back seat, Tommy and Sarah, and I'm just like, and I'm just like, dear God, please let Eli's car be in the driveway. Please let Eli's, and we live 20 minutes from Sarah, 20 long minutes. Remember losing the kids in, in the grocery mm -hmm. store and for one second feels like eternity, right? Mm -hmm. These 20 minutes I'm in the back, going and one kid put I saw him snap his snapchat which who I don't know how to do any of this stuff okay I saw his snapchat was Mana Vista Road and then I was like okay that's that's our house he must be home and then the devil goes oh he's in a ditch on Mana Vista Road right you know all the thoughts all the bottom thoughts he's in, he's in the pool at the bottom of the, everything was coming to my head so finally when we pulled in the driveway Tommy goes his car's in the driveway he's here he stepped away from us. So I'm sure what that was. And da, 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 da. So when we pulled in, I was like, I just kept coming in slowly because I'm like, please, dear God, okay, his car's here. Please don't let him be in the pool. I know he can swim, but I don't want you swimming alone. I'm not there. I really could stop. Stop it out. You know, up here. So I'm like, pulled in, and he's in the family room, and he's watching TV. And, and we go, where have you been? And he's like, watching TV, right? And he's like, in the family room. And we go, Tommy goes, where's your phone? And he goes, it's charging in my room. And he goes, when have you been to <laughs> he's like he did nothing wrong so I loved it because his coach this is a funny side story his coach loves a sermon his coach was like oh I will handle this with Eli tomorrow and me and Tommy are like thank you very much okay <laughs> but we need to do unto others y'all as we would want them to do in communication and friendship right how about in prayer we need to do unto others in prayer. I know I don't have to preach this one for a long time because I'm in a room with a bunch of prayer warriors. Amen? A bunch of women who know that prayer moves heaven. Yeah. Prayer in the name of Jesus enters us into the throne room of heaven. Prayer 
holds each other's arms up in a world that wants to beat us down. Prayer can move mountains. The Bible says faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains. James 5, 13 through 16 says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they sin, they'll be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Amen. This is about praying for each other, lifting each other up, confessing to each other. True intercessory prayer is doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. I used to say to my bagger at Publix, Mr. Willie, I'm praying for you. And you know, one time he said to me, he said, good thing, because I know when you're not. Right? And I was like, oh my gosh. You know, but that is powerful, right? Because we have to truly take time to pray. We can't just say we're praying and then forget we're praying, right? Because we can say, I'll pray for you, or you know, and or just post praying hands emojis. You know, I, I just think about that praying hands emojis and stuff, and I think probably the person who even created that might not even know Jesus, right? I think about that. I'm like, don't just pray praying hands emojis. If we can stop doing immediately. When we tell someone we're going to pray, stop immediately and at least lift their name up to God. Because God already knows what their issue is, right? We don't have to have a zillion words, but if we can just stop what we're doing immediately and lift them up. God knows when we're praying for others. He sees it. Praying for others is the epitome of the golden rule. We all need prayer, so we need to be praying people. Now I need to give you the meat. I know you're like, we are mortal? Okay, listen, but this is the thing. This is the thing that God showed me in the pool that was so cool and I can't wait to say it. God spoke this to my heart and he said, we don't do unto others so they will do unto us. We do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Doing the right thing, Following the golden rule doesn't necessarily mean the other person will reciprocate. Mm -hmm. So I said to the Lord, okay, so we don't do unto others, so they will do to us. We do unto others as we would hope they would do unto us. God said, you have the ministry of reconciliation, not reciprocation. Mm -hmm. We are to do the right thing because it's the right thing. Right. Period. That's it. We do this to glorify God. We do this to shine Christ to the world. We do this because we have the ministry of reconciliation. And we're to encourage everyone to be reconciled to Christ. We don't give expecting anything in return. Sometimes people will repay good for good. Right? But a lot of the times they don't. We do not have the ministry of reciprocation. We have the ministry of reconciliation. Jesus loved people everywhere he went. He did unto others exactly what he would want done unto him, and they hung him on a tree. They hurled insults at him. They crucified him. They tortured him. Jesus did unto others as he would have them do unto him, but they didn't do him right. None of us have. Our sins put him there. And he loves us still, and he always will. So many times God's had to go that, get me to go that extra mile with someone, to bite my tongue when I want to say something. He makes me shut up and be kind or reach out and offer an olive branch to someone who I know is not speaking kindly about me or has said things about me that weren't kind. God's called me to repay evil with good, to seek peace and pursue it. He's called us to walk in it. He's called us to do unto others. But sometimes they don't do the same unto us. Doing the right thing, following the golden rule, doesn't necessarily mean the other will reciprocate. God said they don't do it because of their own strongholds. Mm -hmm. That's it, y'all. Their own insecurities. Mm -hmm. Their own fears. Their own anxieties. Their own mess. So here's the cool part. When we do unto others and then they don't do unto us the way we want them to, we can know God must be working on them. And also, we have the privilege of partnering with God on their behalf. Praise God, right? Yes. We don't, be, when we don't behave correctly because...
because others will automatically behave correctly back. We behave correctly to honor God and to glorify Him. In cases like this, even be used by God. Getting to the point when we don't need reciprocation, we only want to focus on reconciliation with Jesus, takes spiritual maturity. It's a kingdom mindset. It takes heavenly thinking. It takes dying to people pleasing. And it takes the help of the Holy Spirit himself. Thank God for Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So let's go over our points. We do unto others as we would have them do unto us in encouragement. We do unto others as we would have them do unto us in bearing with each other in their burdens. We do unto others as we would have them do unto us in communication and friendship. And we do unto others as we would have them do unto us in prayer. Let's go out, y'all. And let's do unto others as we would have them do unto us.